The Merchant of Venice by William Shakespeare. Hi friends, this is me Payal Datta and in today's video, I am going to help you with the line by line explanation of Act 1, Scene 3 from William Shakespeare's play, The Merchant of Venice. Please like, share and comment if you like my video and also don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Links to other acts and scenes are given in the description below. So now we begin. Act 1, Scene 3 Venice, a public place. Enter Bassanio and Shylock. Shylock was a Jew and a moneylender in Venice. There were not many Jews in England, but in the Middle Ages, English Christians hated the Jews, and this feeling was strong in the 16th century. The Elizabethans also hated the Jewish profession of money lending with interest. Jews were not allowed to own land in England. Therefore, the only profession available to them was money lending. Bassanio, on the other hand, was a Christian. He had come to Shylock to borrow money so that he could go to Belmont and woo the lady richly left that is Portia. So Shylock says, Shylock, 3,000 ducats. Well, Bassini, I sir, for three months. Shylock, for three months. Well, Bassini, for the which, as I told you, Antonio shall be bound. Shylock, Antonio shall become bound. Well, through the simple short dialogues between Shylock and Bassanio, Shakespeare makes his audience aware of the most important condition of the bond, that is, Antonio shall be kept as security. Earlier in Act 1, Scene 1, we had seen in the closing speech of Antonio that he did not have enough liquid cash and so he asked Bassanio to find the money lender and borrow money keeping him as security. Here we find Bassanio following the instructions of his friend and borrowing 3000 ducats from Shylock, keeping him as security. Bassanio, may you stead me? Will you pleasure me? Shall I know your answer? Shylock, 3000 ducats for three months and Antonio bound. Bassanio, your answer to that? Bassanio asked Shylock whether he would supply him with the loan or not. Stead means supply and pleasure me means oblige me. We find that Shylock is very cautious. He continuously repeats Bassanio's demands to make sure they are perfectly understood. This makes Bassanio nervous and he shows irritation when Shylock says, Antonio is a good man, Bassanio. Have you heard any imputation to the contrary? The word good has two implications. Bassanio thinks Shylock refers to Antonio's character and gets angry that a Jew should presume to judge his Christian friend. Shylock, on the other hand, calls Antonio a good man not to describe his character but to explain that he was sufficient enough for the loan, that is, he was financially adequate. And so he says, Oh no, no, my meaning in saying he is a good man is to have you understand me that he is sufficient. Shylock then goes on to enumerate the possible threats to Antonio's business ventures. He says, Yet his means are in supposition. He hath an argosy bound to Tripolis, another to the Indies, a third at Mexico, a fourth for England, and other ventures he had squandered abroad. Shylock here tells us that Antonio was a prudent businessman because his wealth is squandered abroad, that is, distributed worldwide. One of Antonio's ship is on its journey to Tripolis, another is bound for the Indies, a third voyaging in Mexico, fourth in England, and others to various places. But ships are but boats, sailors but men. There be land rats and water rats, 
water thieves and land sea thieves i mean pirates and then there is the peril of waters winds and rocks shylock states that the ships are only planks of boats that is they are fragile the sailors are just men who can easily drown he reminds basinio about the threats at sea which includes the storms winds and rocks by water thieves and land thieves he refers to the pirates the man is notwithstanding sufficient 3000 ducats i think i may take this bond so finally shylock agrees to lend the money he says that even though antonio's investments were subjected to various risks and threats he would provide basinio with the 3000 ducats because antonio was financially adequate basinio be assured you mean shylock i will be assured i may and that i may be assured i will be think me here again shakespeare uses the term assured with different implications basinio means to say that shylock may trust antonio on the other hand shylock says that he will be indeed assured meaning that he will take all his precautions to protect himself and his money may i speak with antonio basinio if it please you to dine with us your shylock wishes to have a word with antonio and basinio invites him to dinner shylock yes to smell pork to eat of the habitation which your prophet the nazaret conjured the devil into shylock's reply introduces the theme of racial hatred he thinks he would be asked to smell pork a meat forbidden in the jewish religion to eat of the habitation which your prophet the nazaret conjured the je- devil into your shylock alludes to the bible where jesus the nazaret healed a madman by ordering the devils that possessed his mind to leave and enter into a herd of pigs i will eat with you i sorry i will buy with you sell with you talk with you walk with you and so following but i will not eat with you drink with you nor pray with you from these words of shylock we can say that religious differences were less important to him than professional jealousy what news on the rialto who is he comes here enter antonio rialto was the name of the venetian stock exchange shylock sees antonio entering the rialto and informs the audience of his arrival basinio this is senior antonio basinio yo introduces antonio to shylock shylock then makes an aside aside is a literary figure where a character speaks to the audience or to himself to express his feelings there are other characters present on the stage but it is assumed that they cannot hear the speaker speak in this aside made by shylock shylock expresses his hatred for antonio he says How like a fawning publican he looks! I hate him for he is a Christian, but for, but more for that in low simplicity he lends out money gratis and brings down the rate of usance. Here with us in Venice, your Shylock compares Antonio to a fawning publican. Publicans were tax collectors for the Romans and were generally oppressive. They were hated by all Jews because they were the agents of Rome who collected taxes also from the Jews. Shylock hates Antonio because he is a Christian and lends money without grat with gratis that is without interest and brings down the name of money lending among the Jewish community. Low simplicity means base foolishness. If I can catch him once upon his hip I will feed fat the ancient grudge I bear him 
When Shylock is informed about Antonio's arrival in the Rialto by Bassanio, he tells the audience that if he could get hold of Antonio at a disadvantage, he would satisfy the long-lasting hatred he had against him. By ancient grudge, Shylock refers to the long-lasting grudge he had against Antonio. He uses the alliteration, feed fat, as though the grudge were an animal to be looked after. He hates our sacred nation. He rails. Even there where merchants most do congregate on me, my bargains and my well-won thrift, which he calls interest. The sacred nation refers to the Jewish race, to which Shylock belongs. Rails means abuses. Antonio hated the Jewish race and abused Shylock even there when merchants most do congregate. That is, where merchants collect and gather in a crowd. That is the Rialto. He also abused his bargains, that is, his business of money lending, and his well-won thrift, that is, his success. Antonio insults Shylock for his business deals and for earning profit by lending money on interest. Cursed be my tribe if I forgive him. Basenio. Shylock, do you hear? So here Shylock's hatred towards the Christians can be seen. Basenio, seeing Shylock lost in his own world, asks Shylock whether he heard him or not. To this Shylock replies, I am debating of my present store, and by the near guess of my memory, I cannot instantly raise up the gross of full 3,000 ducats. So Shylock replies that he was debating, that is calculating in his mind, his memory, whether he could raise the gross whole sum of 3,000 ducats alone. What of that? Jubal, a wealthy Hebrew of my tribe, will furnish me. He then goes on to inform Basenio that Tubal, a rich Hebrew of his tribe, would supply him with the required amount. Be soft, that is, wait a minute. How many months do you desire? He asked Basenio, the tenure of the bond. And then turning towards Antonio, he informs. Rest you fair, good senior. Your worship was the last last man in our mouths. That is, he was the last person that they were discussing about. Antonio, Shylock, abate. I neither lend nor borrow by taking nor by giving of excess. Yet to supply the ripe wants of my friend, I'll break a custom. To Basenio, is he yet possessed how much he would? Shylock, ay, ay, three thousand ducats. Antonio, and for three months. Here we find Antonio saying that although he never lends nor borrows money, by taking or giving interest, he required the loan to supply the urgent need of his friend Basenio. We already know that Basenio needed the amount to make himself presentable in front of Portia in Belmont. He then asks Basenio whether Shylock knows how much loan they require. To this, Shylock mentions the loan amount to Antonio and Basenio reminds him of the duration of the bond, that is, three months. Shylock, I had forgot. Three months, you told me so. Well then, your bond. And let me see, but hear you. Me thought you said you never lend nor borrow upon advantage. Antonio, I do never use it. Here we see that Shylock wants to execute the bond as soon as possible and use it as a chance to take his revenge on Antonio. He mocks Antonio when he says that he thought he heard himself that he did not lend or borrow money upon advantage, that is with interest. To this Antonio informs that sh to Shylock that he had never borrowed a loan before. Shylock. When Jacob grazed his uncle Laban's sheep, this Jacob from our holy Abraham was, as his wise mother wrought in his behalf, the third possessor. Ay, he was the third, 
Here Shylock alludes to Jacob from the Bible. Abraham was the founder of the Hebrew community to which Shylock belonged. Isaac was his son and Jacob was his grandson who became his third successor. Shylock says that Jacob grazed his uncle Laban's sheep as wisely as his mother Rebecca who wrought that is devised a plan to get blessings for her son. Isaac had two sons, Esau and Jacob. Isaac wanted to bless his elder son Esau but would do so after he brought him some savoury meat, that is, meat that is morally accepted. Jacob's mother overheard this conversation and she wanted to get this blessing for her son Jacob. She told Jacob to fetch two goats and prepare a savoury dish and then blind his father with the dish. This way Jacob, under the guidance of his mother Rebekah, got the blessing from his father. Antonio then asked Shylock, And what of him? Did he take interest? To which Shylock tells Antonio the story of Jacob from the holy book of the Genesis, and how he got his payment from Laban. No, not take interest, not as you would say directly interest. Mark what Jacob did. When Laban and himself were compromised that all the earnings which were streaked and pied should fall as Jacob's hire. So Jacob and Laban entered into an agreement that Jacob would receive the wages for all the earnings, that is lambs, which were streaked and pied, that is multicolored. The ewes being rams in the end of autumn turned to the rams. And when the work of the generation was between these woolly breeders in the act, the skillful shepherd pilled me certain vans. That is, the female sheep in the end of autumn turned towards the rams for mating. When the act of breeding took place between the ewes and rams, the skillful shepherd Jacob peeled the barks from certain vans, that is, twigs. And in doing of the deed of kind, he struck them up before the fulsome ewes, who then conceiving did in earning time fall party-coloured lambs, and those were Jacob's. So, Jacob arranged the twigs and kept them in front of the fulsome use, that is the passionate use. Your deed of kind refers to the act of mating. Jacob tricked Laban by placing the twigs in such a way that the use saw them while giving birth and gave birth to spotted multicolored lambs. These lambs were of two colors and thus per, as per agreement they were Jacob's property. This was a way to thrive, and he was blessed, and thrift is blessing if men steal it not. Shylock says that this was Jacob who was blessed to prosper, and his profit was his blessing, because he used his wit to trick his uncle Laban, and he did not steal anything. To this Antonio says, this was a venture, sir, that Jacob served for. A thing not in his power to bring to pass, but swayed and fashioned by the hands of heaven. Antonio tells Shylock that this was a venture, a business venture, which was purely a matter of chance in Jacob's case. He had no certain control in it himself, but it was swayed and fashioned, that is, ruled and shaped according to the will of God. Was this inserted to make interest good or is your gold and silver use and rams? Here Antonio questions Shylock whether he provided this story to prove that charging interest made sense or his interest payments were like Jacob's sheep. Shylock, I cannot tell. I make it breed as fast. But note me, senior. So Shylock says that he makes his money multiply as fast as those sheep that Jacob grazed. He then tries to draw 
Antonio's attention to discuss the rate of the bond. But before he could complete his speech, Antonio interrupts him and addresses Bassanio. Antonio, mark you this Bassanio. The devil can cite scripture for his purpose. An evil soul producing holy witness is like a villain with a smiling cheek. A goodly apple rotten at the heart. Oh, what a goodly outside falsehood hath. Here, Antonio asks Pasenio to remain alert. Referring to Shylock as a devil, he says that a devil can quote scriptures for his own use. An evil soul using and quoting biblical allusions is like a criminal with a smile. That is deceiving. He goes on to say that Shylock looked like a good apple but was a rotten at the core. Mm. Oh, what a goodly outside falsehood hath. He exclaims, what honest look liars have. They look goodly outside, that is, they are pretentious. Shylock, 3,000 ducats. It is a good round sum. Three months from twelve. Then let me see the rate, Antonio. Well, Shylock, shall we be beholding to you? Shylock bears with Antonio's insults and goes on with his business, calculating the rate of interest for the loan. He was waiting for the right time to take his revenge on Antonio. Antonio then asked Shylock whether he was ready to lend them the loan or not. The next speech of Shylock is very important. Shylock in this speech informs the audience how Antonio ill-treated him. Here he turns out to be the spokesperson of the entire Jewish race who were usually insulted by the Christians in the Elizabethan era. Shylock says, Senior Antonio, Many a time and oft in the Rialto you have rated me about my monies and my usances. Still I have borne it with a patient shrug, for sufferance is the badge of all our tribe. Your Shylock tells Antonio that he had often insulted him in the Rialto about his money and his business. Rated me means abused me. Still have I borne it with patient shrug. That is, Shylock bore the insults with patient shrug. Shrug means ignorance. He says that he had put up with the suffering because it was the characteristic of his tribe. That is, the Jewish tribe. You call me misbeliever, cutthroat dog, and spit upon my Jewish gabardin, and all for the use of that which is mine own, well then, it now appears you need my help. Shylock reminds Antonio of the various ways he had insulted him. He says that Antonio had called him a misbeliever, a dirty dog, and had spit on his Jewish clothes, all because he was a Jew and lent money to make profit. Well then, it now appears you need my help. Go to then, you come to me and you say, Shylock, we would have money. You say so. Your Shylock mocks Antonio because in spite of insulting him in the Rialto, Antonio was in need of his help. You say, you that did void your ruin upon my beard, and foot me as you spurn a stranger cur over your threshold. Shiloh goes on to remind Antonio how he void his ruin, that is, emptied his saliva on his beard, that is, spit on him, and foot him, that is, kicked him, like one kicks a stray dog out of their front door. Money's in your suit. What should I say to you? Should I not say... Hath a dog money? Is it possible a cur can lend 3,000 ducats? Or shall I bend low in a bondman's key with 
bated breath and whispered humbleness said this. Here Shylock makes fun of Antonio's present helpless state and asks him how he expected a dog to lend money that to a sum of 3,000 ducats. He continues to mock Antonio saying, or shall I bent low in a bondman's key with bated breath and whispering humbleness said this. Here Shylock mentions how the Jews were expected to behave in front of the Christians. He tells Antonio that even though he was insulted by him previously, Antonio expected him to bow down and remain humble and submissive with a bondman's, bondman's key, that is, a servant's voice, and bated breath, that is, anxiousness. Fair sir, you spat on me on Wednesday last. You spawned me such a day. Another time you called me dog. And for these courtesies I lent you thus much monies. Shylock here means to say that staying humble and bearing insults was the trademark of their tribe. He tells Antonio that last Wednesday Antonio had insulted and spit on him. On another occasion, he had called him a dog, and out of this gratitude for all these favours that he had earlier made, he expected Shylock to lend him the loan. Antonio I am as like to call thee so again, to spit on thee again, to spurn thee too. If thou wilt lend this money, lend it not. As to thy friends, for when did friendship take a breed for barren metal of his friend, but lend it rather to thine enemy, who if he breaks thou mayest with better face? From Antonio's speech it becomes clear how much he hated Shylock. He says that he would continue to call Shylock by names such as Misbeliever and a cutthroat dog. He would spit on Shylock again and keep insulting him like before. He tells Shylock to lend him the money, the loan amount, keeping in mind that they were enemies and not friends. This is because he lends money. if he lends money to a friend, he would not be able to charge interest. On the other hand, if he lent money to a foe, then if his foe became bankrupt and failed to keep his bond, Shylock could easily take his revenge. A breed for barren metal means a product of sterile metal. Shylock had earlier bragged about his money, saying that he made it breed as fast as Jacob's sheep. Shylock Why look you how you storm? I would be friends with you and have your love. Supply your presence. Forget the shames that you have stained me with. Supply your present wants and take no doit of usances for my monies. And you will not hear me. This is kind, I offer. Antonio storms Shylock by saying that in future too, he is likely to abuse and disgrace him. By shames, Shylock refers to the insults hurled upon him by Antonio, such as speaking abusively of him spitting on him, calling him a dog, and ridiculing the Jews. Supply your present wants, and take no doit of nuisances for my monies, and you'll not hear me. Your Shylock tells Antonio that he is willing to supply him with the loan amount, that is the present want, of 3,000 ducats without any interest. This is kind I offer. Basenio this were kindness. When Shylock says this is kind I offer, he means to say that this was the kindness he could offer. The term kind here also refers to the nature of Shylock, the kind of nature he had. He refers to the lending of money without any interest to Antonio as an act of kindness. 
To this, Bassanio replies that it was truly generous of Shylock to make such an offer. Shylock, this kindness will I show. Go with me to a notary, seal me there your single bond. Here Shylock tells Antonio to accompany him to the notary and sign his simple bond. A notary is a lawyer who has the authority to ex execute official and legal dealings and agreements. He then goes on to say the penalty that Antonio has to bear if he is unable to pay on time. And in a merry sport, if you repay me not on such a day, in such a place, such sum or sums as are expressed in the condition, let the forfeit be nominated for an equal pound of your fair flesh to be cut off and taken in what part of your body pleaseth me. Shylock says that the bond stipulates that the forfeit to be paid will be a pound of flesh from any part of Antonio's body that pleaseth him, that is, pleases him. He insists on a pound of Antonio's flesh to take revenge on him and put him completely at his mercy. Shylock's hatred for Antonio is shown in this absurd demand. Taking advantage of the situation, he wants to feed fat the ancient grudge that he earlier bed. Antonio, content in faith, I'll seal to such a bond, and say there is much kindness in a Jew. Masenio, you shall not seal to such a bond for me. I'll rather dwell in my necessity. Antonio agrees to the bond. However, Bassanio is reluctant to agree to Shylock's terms because he does not trust the kind of words uttered by Shylock. He tries to prevent Antonio from agreeing to such a bond. He tells Antonio that he will not make such an agreement on his account. He adds that he would rather remain poor as he was and do it without his present supply it wants as such a price. Antonio, why, fear not, man, I will not forfeit it. Within these two months, that's a month before this bond expires, I do expect return of thrice three times the value of this bond. This speech of Antonio proves his own overconfidence and generosity towards Bassanio. Antonio is confident that there is no danger in signing the bond because he is certain that within two months, that is one month before the due date, his ships will bring him thrice three times, that is nine times the value of the bond. Shylock, O oh, Father Abraham, what these Christians are, whose own hard dealings teaches them suspect the thought of others. Here Shylock alludes to Abraham again, the founder of the Jewish nation. He questions the Christian's nature. According to him, the mean nature of the Christians teaches them to suspect others. Pray you, tell me this. If he should break his day, what should I gain by the extraction of the forfeiture? A pound of man's flesh taken from a man is not so esteemable, profitable neither, as flesh of muttons, beefs or goats. He questions Antonio and Bassanio to tell him what he would gain if Antonio failed to repay him by the deadline. He says that a pound of human's flesh is not esteemable, that is valuable, as a pound of mutton or beef. I say, to buy his favour I extended this friendship. If he will take it, so. If not, adieu. And for my love, I pray you, wrong me not. Here Shylock considers his offer as a favour to a friend. He tells Antonio that he would be great if he, it would be great if he agreed to his favour. If not, he expects Antonio not to think badly of him. Antonio then agrees to the bond. Antonio, yes, Shylock, I will seal unto this bond. Shylock, then meet me forthwith at the notary's. 
give him direction for this merry bond and i will go and pass the ducat street see to my house left in the fearful guard of an unthrifty knave and presently i'll be with you exit shylock So your Shylock asks Antonio to meet him at the notary to sign the bond as per the agreed condition. But before that, Shylock would arrange for the three thousand ducats from Tubal and put it in his purse. Shylock informs Antonio that he would then visit his house, which was left in a fearful guard of an unthrifty knave, that is, a careless servant who could not be trusted. Your Shylock refers to Launcelot. After visiting his own house, Shylock would meet Antonio. Saying this, Shylock leaves, and he exits. So then Antonio is left alone with Bassanio. Antonio, the Hebrew will turn Christian. He grows kind. When Antonio tells Bassanio that the Hebrew, that is Shylock, was growing kind like a Christian. Bassanio tells him that he did not take it when a villain acted to be nice and fair. He says, "I like not fair terms and a villain's mind." Antonio, come on! In this there can be no dismay. My ships come home a month before the day. Antonio. tells Bassanio not to worry about his ships as they would return in a month before the due date of the bond and the exit throughout the scene antonio maintains that he has nothing to worry about despite his diverse investments it becomes apparent that he has no other plans if he loses all his wealth in his ships So with this I come to the end of act 1 scene 3 if you like my video please like share and subscribe to my channel if you have any doubts from this scene then leave it in the comment section below i will definitely answer explanations to other scenes are given in the description below you may check them if you require thank you